and the Green Gateway, best practice advice and support tools for financial institutions. My name is Frank Lee. I'm head of division in the advisory services at the European Investment Bank. And as I say, I have the honor and pleasure of hosting and moderating today's event. Um, we have an excellent lineup of speakers for you, um, including some of our in-house experts, as well as uh, colleagues and, uh, that we work with in our financial institution partner banks. Um, today is also the official launch of what we call the Green Eligibility Checker Tool, uh, part of the Green Gateway Advisory Platform. I will tell you a little bit more about that in a short while, but first I will hand over to our Vice President, Vice President of the European Investment Bank, Mrs. Liana Pavlova, who will give us a, an introduction. Over to you, Liliana. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Frank. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. Thank you, thank you all for joining us uh, today in this uh, last day of COP26. It has been inspiring to, to follow the, the works of such an important uh, international platform and uh, witness the uh, even stronger um, commitment of such a diverse group of stakeholders in setting ambitious targets in our uh, joint effort in the fight with, uh, against climate change. At the EAB, we know that once the, the lights of COP26 go out later today, the real world work will have to continue on the ground. Uh, and our contribution in this regard, uh, focusing on uh, developing tools and products uh, and finance of the investments needed to, to combat the climate change and to support uh, green and digital uh, transformation and transition. As EU Climate Bank, we have already committed uh, to the relocation of investments from oil and gas uh, related projects uh, towards climate action and environmental uh, sustainability projects. But also, uh, we know that we cannot do this alone and we need to inspire, we need to support and we need to provide incentives to, uh, to people, to organizations, to our partners with whom we work, of course, including commercial banks and national promotional institutions. We rely on these partners and we on all, all these partner financial institutions uh, to, to increase their financing support to climate related uh, investments and especially focusing on smaller projects uh, promoted by SMEs and mid caps. And to help us to achieve that, uh, I'm really proud, as Frank already mentioned, to launch today a new advisory support tool, which we call Green Eligibility Checker. This tool uh, is freely available uh, all through a, a new uh, Green Gateway Internet portal, uh, which has been developed by the bank uh, with the funding support by, from the European Investment Advisory Hub, the advisory mandate funded by the, by the European Commission and the bank. It is designed to support commercial banks, national promotional institutions, and other financiers in checking the eligibility of potential green projects. Uh, with, uh, with initiatives like this, uh, like the Green Gateway and uh, Green Eligibility Checker, um, our intention is uh, to develop the green financing markets across the EU and uh, thereby making it easier to identify, to quantify and account for green project investments, because apparently this is the, the main challenge uh, which all institutions at the moment are facing. The Green Gateway Advisory Package also uh, offers targeted bilateral support to financial institutions in order to provide really necessary and much valuable support in capacity building through trainings and special tailor-made uh, sessions to identify new sectors and clients with uh, climate action potential, 
to develop uh, new or to modify the existing green financing products and to define any new tools and procedures on how to support uh, origination uh, and reporting of green projects. Uh, we have already piloted this tool with selected uh, number of uh, partner financial institutions. And the message we receive, uh, we are receiving from the market is very positive. So we are, uh, we are really happy to see uh, that uh, our financiers across the, across the Europe are setting up and implementing this, uh, this kind of green strategies and are willing and uh, willing and uh, uh, motivated to to participate um, in and uh, to engage in uh, green financing, in promoting green financing. Uh, we know that the private sector has a leading role to play in this process, and uh, of course we will have opportunity uh, in this event uh, today now to hear the testimonies of some of these uh, partners who first tested. Uh, the system and with whom we are currently working and we are looking forward to further expand this uh, cooperation. So uh, once again, thank you very much for, your, for, for being with us today. I hope that you will be inspired but, uh, by what you hear and you will feel much more confident in moving forward with us to finance uh, and to support more climate-related uh, investments in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Liliana. Thank you for the, the great introduction. And indeed, um, as we are a, a wholesale lending institution at the EIB, we, we clearly uh, rely and work a lot with uh, commercial banks and national promotional banks across the EU and, and wider, of course. And, and we certainly rely on this relationship to reach and finance the, the smaller projects on the ground, which after all uh, will probably be the projects that will contribute overall greatest to the, uh, to the climate shift. So if we can uh, perhaps put the slides back on the screen, um, we will tell you a little bit more now about what this green gateway platform and more specifically the green eligibility checker tool is all about. Um, obviously, this is meant to be an introduction, uh, and I clearly will not have time today to go through all the details and, and intricacies of how this tool works. Uh, so I therefore encourage you to, to have a look at this tool after the event. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll be given the, the website address uh, in a little while. But just to say that um, this is part of the Green Gateway platform, as we call it, um, and as our Vice President mentioned it is financed by the European Investment Advisory Hub, uh, a joint initiative between the European Commission and the European Investment Bank. Uh, and essentially it consists of two main parts. The, the platform itself is primarily targeting, as I said, our financial institutions and partners that we work with, but, it, but indeed a wider network of financial instruments, uh, financial institutions, not necessarily ones that take uh, financing from EIB. It consists of two main components. Um, on the left side of the screen is essentially the uh, online tool, essentially the web portal, as we call it. Um, and again, you can access this by, by looking up Green Gateway at EIB. And it, will, and it will eventually consist of three functioning components within the web portal. The first one which is the one that we are launching today, is called the Green Eligibility Checker. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then we also plan uh, and are currently working in uh, populating as well the database of information, uh, which we will call an e-library, with green guidance material, um, a lot of knowledge material and, and documents relating to, for example, the EU taxonomy and EIB's green eligibility criteria. And then, Eventually, we also hope to have online training courses, um, which we think uh, will be extremely important for our partner institutions and, again, more broadly in the market, to get a better understanding uh, and, and gain greater conf confidence, really, in what it means to finance green projects, uh, what are the rules around this, uh, what is green, what is not green, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, on the right-hand side of the slide, you also see um, the second major pillar, let's say, of our Green Gateway platform, 
and that is uh, the bilateral advisory support, as we call it. So this is where we provide one-on-one -on -one support to financial intermediaries in order to address uh, certain certain needs uh, specifically to their institution uh, in order to essentially use the Green Gateway and finance ultimately more green investments with our funding. If we move on to the next slide, please. So the, the first uh, of the web tools, as I mentioned, is called the Green Eligibility Checker. And here on the screen, you will see the website address uh, to access the tool. It is, as our Vice President mentioned, freely available online to any user. Um, and I therefore encourage you to, to have a look at it. Uh, by the way, on, on the tool, you will also uh, uh, have access to a frequently asked questions section, as well as uh, be able to send us uh, questions that you may have on how the tool works. So uh, you may not be able to obviously get all your questions answered today. Um, and by the way, I would encourage you, for those of you who are online uh, directly on this event, to send us questions you may have as we, as we go through today's session in the chat. Uh, we will try to, to pick them up. Uh, we hope to have more of an interactive session in a short while with our panelists. Uh, but please feel free to, to post us questions. Otherwise, as I say, you'll be able to reach us through the, through the, 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 the website and email address that's indicated in the Green Checker tool on, on the website. The main objective of the Green Eligibility Checker, as you see there, is really to increase uh, the green financing of our financial intermediary partners and, uh, and the wider financial institutions working in the market um, to originate, appraise, and to report on the green investment projects that they're financing. And these projects, um, essentially, this tool is meant to, to help with uh, smaller scale projects, projects that are promoted by small and medium sized enterprises or small mid caps, as we call them. Also, smaller projects promoted, for example, by public authorities, municipalities, etc. Um, you'll hear perhaps a little bit more about uh, specifications around this later on. The idea also is to provide a feedback on that project in terms of its climate impact, uh, it, for example, in terms of CO2 savings. Uh, energy savings, for example. And we are obviously trying to align this tool as much as possible with the EU taxonomy principles. Um, certainly, we follow the principles, uh, although, as we all know, the EU taxonomy is a, is a moving target. It is a, a relatively complicated piece of legislation, and therefore we don't uh, claim that this eligibility checker uh, answers all the questions and addresses all the, the, the requirements, as it were, of the EU taxonomy. But it does address all of the requirements, well, the most of them that we require from EIB eligibility criteria when it comes to intermediated finance. Um, I think there's one more slide, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so if we can move on. Yes, this is really just to give you a little bit more information on the bilateral advisory support. As I mentioned earlier, this is the second pillar of the, of the platform, the Green Gateway platform. So this, as I said, is to provide support, one-on-one -on -one ad hoc support to the financial institutions that we work with, whether it be in the area of product development, origination, green eligibility screening, impact reporting and monitoring, um, obviously alignment as much as possible with the taxonomy, and measuring and managing climate-related financial risk. These are topics, all of which might be addressed, or some, depending on what the needs are. Those are the final loan recipients uh, that you see at the bottom of the slide, which I mentioned earlier. And then we're also focusing our support in uh, various thematic areas, uh, obviously, which are important from the, from the point of view of climate and environment. Um, and the tool itself uh, addresses a number of those sectors, not all of them, I have to say, but it certainly covers agriculture and forestry, uh, energy efficiency in, in so far as it relates to buildings, for example, or industry. Uh, renewable energy is also covered by the new tool. Circular economy, not yet. This is a relatively complicated topic um, and something that we are currently working on, as is, as is the next few. And, and we are addressing, though, through the tool, uh, sustainable transport, which is one of the other sectors. But in essence, through the bilateral support, we are willing to work with uh, our partner institutions in any of those sectors that are mentioned there. Right. I think this brings me to the end of the, of the introduction. And... Um, 
Now I would like to pass the floor to Ms. Christine Koslova uh, from the European Commission. She is head of unit within uh, Director General for Economic and Financial Affairs, um, and she's in charge of the InvestEU program insofar as governance and the advisory hub is concerned. So without further ado, I'll pass you over to Christine. The floor is yours, Christine. Thank you, Frank. Uh, dear Vice President Pavlova, dear Frank and participants, first of all, I would like to thank the EIB colleagues for inviting me to be with you today at the Green Gateway facility launch. And let me also use the opportunity to thank again Vice President Pavlova for your constant and visible support to the European Investment Advisory Hub. As Frank already mentioned, and, and you yourself also uh, mentioned, uh, European Investment Advisory Hub is our joint advisory program that was launched with the Investment Plan for Europe more than five years ago by the European Commission and by the Investment Bank. And this was one of the first demand-driven advisory programs in Europe. After five years of activity, and as we are preparing for the transition to the InvestEU advisory hub from next year on, I think we can be very proud and satisfied with the results that we have achieved together so far. The advisory support that has been provided to the project promoters, private and public, has led to successful financing of investment projects with the support of European Fund for Strategic Investments, the EIB own lending, and of course, other private sources, uh, private and public sources. The hub has helped to structure investment platforms and it has also strengthened the capacity of many national promotional institutions and financial intermediaries who are our partners. The Green Gateway initiative that you are launching today is a very concrete and practical example of advisory support which is made available to the financial institutions. More than half of the requests that have been supported by the European Investment Advisory Hub and that benefited from detailed advisory support had a climate dimension and were either in the energy, transport or environment related sectors. This is very positive news and it shows a clear dynamic towards the green transition in the infrastructure sector. At this moment, let me turn to our future challenges and the actual reason for us being here today. Frank, maybe you could turn the next slide. As Vice President Pavlova already clearly mentioned in her introduction remarks, the investment, Europe, investment needs in Europe within the next 10 years and beyond are very significant. And this is not, uh, if we are adding transport infrastructure needs, the environmental objectives, uh, this adds another more than 200 billion euros per year. The InvestEU Fund and the InvestEU Advisory Hub will support the mobilization of such private investments. And as it was already mentioned, majority of those investments will need to be in the climate action areas and will need to come from private sources. Next slide. That is why under the future InvestEU Advisory Hub and building on our very successful cooperation with the European Investment Bank, we will ensure the continuation of our current successful advisory programs, which are supporting climate transition, such as the European Local Energy Assistance, also known as ELENA, technical assistance, and the Climate Action Support Facility, which also includes among concrete deliverables, the Green Gateway, gateway Tool and the Green Eligibility Checker that you are launching today. There will be many other new and dedicated advisory tools providing sustainable infrastructure advisory, support to just transition regions and circular economy. Can we move to the next slide? Building on this successful model of the European Investment Advisory Hub, 
And uh, under the InvestEU Advisory Hub, project promoters and financial intermediaries will have a one-stop shop access to more than 20 advisory initiatives. Great majority of those will be implemented by our very good and main advisory partner, the European Investment Bank. Our successful experience with the European Investment Bank clearly shows that financing and investment projects are likely to improve the chances to get finance and succeed um, in their lifetime after uh, they are benefiting from the advisory support. Therefore, the InvestEU Fund and the InvestEU Advisory Hub will work in parallel, enhancing the firepower power, firepower of the EU financing to the green investment. As you can see on this slide, um, our aim is to expand the advisory support, and this will be structured under the InvestEU program, uh, closely linked to the four policy windows, which are also part of the InvestEU fund. And of course, the most significant part uh, and the biggest window also for the advisory activities will be the one which is covering sustainable infrastructure, uh, which will focus uh, the project and advisory support in the clean energy sector and mobility, digital connections, circular economy, climate adaptation, bioeconomy and environment, natural capital. But also under the other advisory initiatives, which will be provided under the other policy windows, there will be a possibility and support to SMEs, to small and medium-sized companies, to innovative companies, to help them meet the sustainability targets and contribute to the overall investment needs in Europe. I will stop here, and I, I wish that the Green Gateway tool that you will present in a minute becomes another success story. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christine. And um, I think just to remind the colleagues online today that indeed um, this tool is, is, is funded by the European Investment Advisory Hub. Uh, as you say, Christine, this has been a successful initiative and will continue uh, under the new InvestEU program, which is both a financing guarantee facility and an advisory uh, component. And we look forward, obviously, to supporting more climate investment on the one hand and climate advisory support, which we see as, as very much needed and going hand in hand with financing through those two main instruments in the future, at least within the EU. Um, and just to mention that this program is also being launched outside the EU, uh, obviously with different partners, etc. But it is obviously recognized that this is not only needed with inside the union, but certainly outside the union as well. So thank you very much again for, for joining us today, Christine. Now, before we get into the panel discussion um, and introducing you to the speakers for that, we have a short video to show you, which essentially is meant to outline, again, in, in brief detail, how the green eligibility checker actually works. Again, it is merely a brief introduction, and I would encourage you actually to go online and try the tool uh, and, uh, and have fun with it. But uh, let's see the video. if. We can, please. Welcome to the Green Eligibility Checker. Developed by the European Investment Bank with funding support from the European Investment Advisory Hub, the Green Checker assesses compliance of investment projects with EIB Green eligibility criteria for its financing channeled via financial intermediaries. If we can, It also please. estimates expected environmental impacts such as energy Welcome savings, green CO2 reductions and more. With the Green Checker, banking staff can be more confident that their client interactions, project origination, appraisal and reporting will be in line with the EIB Green eligibility and EU taxonomy requirements. So, how does it work? First, tell us where the investment will be located. Here comes an important part. Step 1. Select an investment measure for assessment. Anything from energy efficiency and small-scale renewables in buildings, industry, agriculture and transport. Let's go with photovoltaic systems. Now for step two. Time to provide details for the measure. Don't have the exact values? No problem. 
You can rely on several default values or fine tune the assessment by changing default assumptions. You can also switch to the advanced mode for a more precise assessment. In the top left corner, you may notice a box with EIB Green. This means your chosen measure is aligned with EIB Green eligibility criteria. If you see this, then the measure you selected is not EIB Green. Click Done and let's move on to the next step. At this step, you can add an additional measure. Once you have added all the measures for your project, Step 3 allows you to view the total results of your assessment and to download the PDF report Green Checker results. And there you have it. Easy as ABC, just follow the steps. One, two, three. Welcome to the Green Eligibility Checker. Great, thank you very much. Um, so hopefully that gave you a bit of a flavor of what the tool is and how it works. Um, but as I say, I encourage you to, to have a look at it for yourself uh, online. Um, the video is again on the website, um, so you, you can see it again if you wish. Uh, it is actually quite quite a sophisticated, detailed tool. Um, it, it covers essentially a number of those sectors that I talked about before. And in fact, within those sectors, there are a number of subsectors. So it, it does, in fact, I think, cover something like 40 subsectors um, of activities. And so, therefore, as I say, I encourage you to to have a look at it, um, work your way around it, and if, if you have questions, obviously, just send them through to us. I think as well the green eligibility checker as part of the green gateway is in essence uh, our attempt at EIB to try to join up the the policy and the the ideals and the legislation around moving towards uh, a more climate friendly future with uh, how this will actually be financed um, and as we say in English we're looking at where the rubber hits the ground um, and in this respect our partner financial institutions obviously play a critical role because it will be them that will have to deal with the day-to-day -day reality of how this is actually going to work in practice. It is therefore a great pleasure to have our panelists uh, with me and us today. Um, and I will just quickly introduce them uh, to you. We have uh, Mr. Bartosz Wojcicki, CFO and board member of Pekao Leasing in Poland. We have Mr. Martin Godeman, Head of Group Funding at ProCredit uh, Group. Mr. Marius Graf, Managing Director of Treasury and Finance at Bosch Bank in Poland. And last but not least, um, Daniela Dietrich Ristich, uh, Senior Climate Change Specialist at the European Investment Bank. So welcome panelists. Um, May I start by asking uh, each of you really to, to give us your take on um, the challenge, let's say, uh, that we all face here. Uh, obviously, we are interested to hear what each of you as institutions are doing in this space. Uh, and perhaps you can also mention, uh, you know, how you see the tool, if you've used it already, um, and, and any of the bilateral support that might be available to you. So, shall we start with uh, Bartosz? Would you like to... Uh, Give us your give us your thoughts, Bartos. Um, thanks, Frank. Um, uh, first of all, no, I can't stop to just say thanks to the EAB for inviting Pico to this event. Me personally, I'm like very happy to be representing Pico. Um, uh, within the group, I'm with Pico Leasing, so a specific um, uh, a company that. Um, uh, benefits from uh, EIB funds in particular and transfers that into the uh, for further into the, the economy. That's for the very brief explanation of you know the the, the business we're doing. Uh, warm welcome to all our participants and special Frank, uh, congratulations to you Frank for dealing really well with my last name. Um, uh, yeah, so you, you, you've asked about, you know, uh, like impressions, thoughts, uh, um, uh, top of the head thoughts about the green eligibility checker. Um, uh, we've just been going through that in the past uh, weeks as the tool is pretty fresh, uh, I believe. And this is really something that we would 
like to put in the um, center of our pr process, targeting our prospects or you know, for the, our clients um, into the um, uh, green criteria, uh, as the tool itself, it proves um, to be, first of all, easy to follow. And uh, secondly, it uh, deals with the numerous um, uh, criteria, sub criteria, num numerous um, uh, uh, features, facts, and definitions of uh, how a, fa a facility to be funded can meet or cannot meet the, the criteria. Uh, we need a number of um, uh, facilities to fall under the green. And um, eligibility criteria to um, uh, satisfy the requirements of bilateral funding we we have with EIB. And um, uh, you know, like uh, I may stop at this point. All of my my other colleagues to also express their first thought. Uh, happy to um, uh, you know um, explain a bit more on. Uh, why is it is so important for us like you know, strategically to be into the green financing thanks for now yeah thank you Bartosz. Thanks, we might well indeed come back to you on on that point that you raised uh martin uh, over to you tell us about uh, what's happening at ProCredit. <laughs> Yeah, first of all, also thanks for, for being invited to this event and for the chance to tell a bit about um, our strategy in this area and how we cooperate there with, uh, with EIB. A couple of words on ProCredit itself. So ProCredit, we are an impact-oriented impact group of commercial banks serving thing SMEs. So 95% of our nearly 6 billion loan portfolios with businesses and our geographic focus is Eastern and Southeastern Europe, so the Western Balkan, CS countries like Moldova, Georgia, Ukraine, and within the EU, it's Bulgaria, Romania, and part of Greece. So we headquartered in Frankfurt. That's also where we regulated and where we are listed on the stock exchange. If you want to learn more about us, I invite you to visit our website yeah, or just look at out for the bank with the rainbow colors in its logo. So our business philosophy is to work with SMEs as they are the backbone of, of any economic development, but not in a narrowly defined, purely, let's say, GDP uh, growth-driven sense, but broader. So by our way of doing banking, we want to contribute to a civil society in its all its aspects and contribute to greening the economy. And that was a point in time when we then started granting so-called green loans. Uh, the challenges at that time were the same, I think, as they are today. So how to support green investments undertaken by SMEs, undertaken by SMEs in so-called emerging markets. So kind of fundamental questions came up with like, what is green? How to define it? I mean, the same ones as to previous times. Now you have a common language. Um, you have standards in accounting. And in principle, the same is needed for green. One needs a common framework, a common language, and both the green eligibility checker and the EU taxonomy, I think we are key steps to achieve this. And this is why we, for credit, entered into this advisory project. Um, by the way, and now coming also elaborating a bit on the, the relationship with EIB, we, leaving this specific uh, advisory project aside, um, the EIB cooperation with us has in practice many green elements, although they're not really labeled as that one. Green loans and green investments loan by default are long-term. And here we benefit a lot of, from the long-term financing of EIB, even if it's not labeled green. And second, maybe even more important under Innofin, and it was already mentioned in the previous presentation, Innofin, the innovation, guarantee scheme organized or managed by EIF, the European Investment Fund. A loan of portfolio of 1.5 billion was granted by us. Out of these 1.5 billion, 40% went into innov innovative green investments. So 40% out of 1.5 billion. Yeah, maybe just one final remark. I think uh, the question is also, what does it take 
to develop green and go even beyond it. Keywords were already mentioned, circular economy, plastics, etc. I think there are many things like technical expertise, uh, being very close to the clients, etc. But I think more than anything else, um, what at least that's our view, you, what is key is you need the mindset um, and I think you need the determination to build a green loan portfolio. You need, really need to want to do it. And I think that's key in also achieving major progress in the journey ahead of us. So far, my kind of... Yes. Thank you, Martin. I mean, you, you picked up on a number of really good points there, I think. And uh, we might circle back to you in a, in a short while. I mean, I think um, you've highlighted, as you say, uh, the challenges of defining what's green, what's not green. And as you say, it's, it's, it's changed over the last couple of years. I suppose it's going to change even more going forward. Um, I do also fully agree with you around the complexities um, of getting people motivated into the space, uh, which you mentioned at the end. Uh, certainly, we on the advisory side have seen this challenge, uh, particularly in something like energy efficiency in, in housing where you know it, it requires a lot of efforts to convince homeowners to to move in this direction even if it's fairly obvious that the benefits are, are clear uh, you know you've got to get them off their couches as it were and and, and, and start doing some work to, to to fix their building so fully agree with with what you're saying and, and and the need for the need for standardization as well perhaps which is something we'll, we'll come back on uh, maybe let's just move to Marius uh, from Bosch Bank and Bosch Bank uh, is to some extent already a green bank, uh, I understand, um, and it's sort of a crossover between a commercial bank and a national promotional bank. So, Marish, we look forward to uh, telling you telling us what's what's happening there. Good morning. Thank you for inviting Bosch Bank uh, to this interesting event. Well, I present the Bosch Bank, which is the only, I think, specialized uh, green bank in uh, Poland and worth mention is translation of the full name of the bank. And it is Bank for Environmental Protection. So it's very, very green. Since its creation, that is from 30 years, Bosch has been financing investments in areas of environmental protection, water management, energy efficiency, and in recent years in renewable energy resources, including PV. Uh, installations. As for our main target groups, uh, uh, they are companies, including municipal companies and SMEs, municipalities and owners of multi-family uh, buildings. We also provide services to uh, uh, individual clients, but currently this is not our main um, focus. Uh, some features indicate our special role. We are focusing on green financing and according to our recently adopted strategy, at least 50% of our loan portfolio should be in the form of pro-environmental loans. We also have a group of in-house ecology experts. I think uh, we are the only bank in Poland hiring such professional engineers. Looking at the broader view, according to the estimates of economists, the essential green transition related projects uh, to be implemented in Poland by 2030 will amount to 300, 350 billion euros. And although the significant amount of this project will come uh, uh, from the public funds, national and uh, EU funds, more than we estimate that more than 75% well, the funding will have to be provided by financial sector. And this is the clue. How to finance wisely? The green transition is a real challenge. What mix of financial products should be used to achieve the best results? So I think that apart from loans, which are very needed, consultancy and advisory is an extremely important uh, uh, component. Why? Because as I said, money should be spent uh, wisely and efficiently. So the key is the mix of sectoral knowledge, and this is in the banking sector, but also in the, with the environmental knowledge. Client, client must be sure that uh, when choosing uh, the optimal solution, they have not only financial support, but also the expert, run, expert one. Uh, according to our strategy, in the forthcoming years, we will focus on financing industry, construction, transportation and logistics and uh, energy sector. And we are using a different source of fundings. One of the most important e uh, is loans from EIB, 
And uh, I'm happy to say that two weeks ago, we signed with uh, EIB the seventh loan agreement in the form of AMBIL. And uh, this is the line for 75 million uh, euros for companies, municipalities, and owners of multi-family uh, buildings. It should be stressed that uh, at least 50% of the amount granted by EIB uh, uh, is to be allocated, it will be allocated in projects categorized as climate action uh, financing. So as I said, financing pro environmental projects uh, it's not a special challenge for us. We have been doing this every year, every day for at least 30 years. We have an experience, know-how and ambition to do even more for the environment. So we are constantly expanding our offer. So why we are here? We are here because we want to do it still uh, more and more efficient, in more and more efficient way. And that's why a few months ago, we started talks with a uh, unit uh, in EIB on technical assistance under climate action support uh, uh, facility. We have to mention that at the same time, we are, work we are mm, working on technical assistance from ELENA EU program. And we hope uh, we will sign the contract still uh, uh, at the uh, still this uh, during this year, probably close to the end of the of the year. Thank you. Thank you, Marius. Um, yeah, and you mentioned the, the right at the end the Elena facility, which was also I think mentioned by Christine in her slides, part of the. Part of the, the uh, future InvestEU uh, advisory hub activities as well to support uh, very much energy efficiency improvements in buildings and, uh, and public transport, at a, certainly at a local authority level or local level. Um, I want to give the floor also now to Daniela. Daniela, you are obviously a key expert in this in the space. You have been a key uh, proponent and contributed to the development of the of the of the web tool the green gateway and the green uh, eligibility checker you as well obviously see things from the perspective of, of engaging with many banks across europe and, and possibly beyond that um, what what are the trends that you see from from your point of view um, you know do, do, do you see more going on uh, tell us about it please <laughs> A uh, short answer. I, I can uh, uh, I can say yes. I definitely see uh, uh, more going on and an increasing amount going on. I think uh, our three uh, panel interventions that that we've had so far uh, they they demonstrate very well how actively you know that the banking sector is is embracing the the green journey and and from the EIB side I mean this is really excellent uh, news uh, and and it's excellent uh, uh, to have uh, such uh, dedicated um, partners so I just want to say that we are uh, really proud working um, with you um, why because uh, well our our vice president mentioned it uh, already uh, we simply cannot solve the, the climate uh, crisis alone. We cannot solve it without uh, the strong involvement of, of the banking sector. We set uh, uh, very ambitious targets for the for the EIB group, but uh, to achieve our targets, we need partners. We need uh, strong partners uh, with whom we can share uh, knowledge, exchange knowledge, um, and and experience. Uh, and this includes the banks and other financial institutions that that we work with. Uh, what what we are seeing is that uh, an increased uh, number of of our partner banks, uh, leasing companies, and other financial institutions. You mentioned the NP, uh, the national promotional banks we work with. Uh, an increasing number uh, of these partners are making um, public sustainable finance uh, commitments. So these public commitments, they are a very important signal that uh, the banks intend to support sustainability in and support it in a measurable way. Uh, we also see an increased interest um, in, in our advisory services, in, in the technical assistance and, and the online tools um, that, that we offer. 
And what we also uh, see is that interest comes very much in the context of the upcoming um, EU taxonomy uh, regulations, which will have a significant impact on, on the bank's approach to, to green uh, lending. So banks are looking very closely at the implication of the EU taxonomy requirements and its mandatory disclosure requirements. Um, and of course, they are concerned uh, with, with the implementation challenge and how to operationalize uh, the, the EU taxonomy requirements. Um, I would like to say that uh, banks in the EU, yes, they will have mandatory reporting obligations. However, they also wish to use the taxonomy for, for other than uh, mandatory report, reporting purposes. And uh, this is the case, for example, in the development of, of green banking products that are targeting uh, small and medium-sized uh, companies, now, which is the market segment uh, that we are primarily addressing uh, through the Green Gateway. And, and we, have, uh, we have heard uh, the importance of the segment already, various uh, sources from, from VP Pavlova, but uh, also from from, from, from Marty uh, in the work that Procredit is doing. Um, one important uh, key challenge uh, that is almost always mentioned um, uh, is the availability and, and the quality of data, especially in the context uh, of, of SMEs and, and green financing that is targeted uh, to, to SMEs. I mean, SMEs themselves, they are not going to be subject to mandatory reporting requirements under the, the EU Non-Financial Reporting Directive for, for quite a while. Um, however, data integrity is, is important and it's tools such as the, the green eligibility checker that we have presented today that can help banks in their client communication. It can help banks to engage with clients and provide guidance to banks on gathering the relevant data already during the loan origination um, purpose. Technical assistance, as the technical assistance uh, offered uh, through the, the EIB screen gateway, can also play an important role in providing clear and um, above all practical guidance to enable the banking sector to take uh, early action to develop new or enhance its, its existing um, banking products. And at the same time, uh, as the EU taxonomy evolves, ensure that uh, such products are consistent with the EU taxonomy uh, requirements. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Daniela. That was that was interesting input and indeed absolutely correct. There are other challenges, and at the same time, uh, we have our our SMEs on the ground that uh, have a number of other challenges to deal with, I guess. Um, but I but I think the tool is, as you say, quite useful in 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 helping the banks ask the right questions of the kinds of information that are the basic information that's needed in order to to assess uh, something as green or not, as it were. Um, I think I was just uh, looking to see if we have any questions in the chat. I don't believe we do, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, that often happens in these sorts of online uh, events. Uh, I do think that we have, however, somewhere close to 100 uh, viewers, so that's that's not bad. Um, and at least there's, there's, there's a keen interest to some extent in, in, in what we're talking about today. Maybe I'll, I'll come back to you, uh, Bartosz, just on the, um, I think you were starting to, to get into this a little bit. Um, and I think just also to pick up on what Daniela was saying, which is, you know, this is, this is the taxonomy is not necessarily always a, seen as a challenge. It, it, there's also, I guess, a number of opportunities that come from this and a number of new business areas, perhaps, um, that, that open up to, to financial institutions such as yours. Um, what do you see, therefore, as, as the benefits, as it were, of going more green? Um, you know, benefits in terms of maybe accessing new uh, funding channels for the bank or benefits downstream that you might be passing on to, to, to your clients, you know, um, incentivizing them, I suppose, to, to also go more green, as it were. Uh, mm, yeah. You see, to, to answer that, perhaps I would, just take a small step back, won't take long. Um, uh, Martin, you've been referring to some situations like, you know, t 10 years ago, and I would only like to go like, three years ago to, to really show you 
what is the pace of changes, how rapidly changes are, are coming. Uh, uh, Martin, you've been presenting this 10 years perspective. Anyway, three years ago, I, I joined Picao Leasing. And uh, since that, that time, we've already uh, concluded three projects together with EIB, uh, 300 million euros in, in total. Another project is coming. Anyway, for the first 100 million euro tranche three years back, uh, we only started mentioning something about uh, green criteria or uh, gender equality criteria. The main focus was for us to transfer those funds and support the, the local economy, uh, like workplaces and all that economy, uh, economy related aspects. For the second tranche, we started um, uh, more serious discussion and that only continued. So we ended up today when where, where we uh, mo most of our discussions around the um, new uh, funding program with EAB that's, that we have on the table is about these criteria such as uh, uh, green asset financing and gender equality support. Um, so without going green, those sources of funding will be simply unavailable, unavailable at all. It's not a matter we will be able to get that at a different price, not that preferential price, for instance. We won't, I, I believe we won't be able to do uh, get that source of funding at all. And for a uh, company such as PKO, this is an, re, uh, an you know, ultimately like um, the, the, the most important slice in our in funding uh, structure. The uh, funds that comes from EAB, I hope you don't mind, I also mentioned Council of Europe Development Bank, together with, with you, uh, th these are preferential sources of funding uh, that we transfer into the local economy in Poland. But since very recently, it comes at an increased expectations of where we allocate those funds and what is the benefit for green asset, for gender gender equality that we uh, provide. That has not been a, a case even, you know, three years back, not to mention that the, the case that Martin has been creating, what was the different 10 years ago. And now you see, like, uh, if I fast forward to, to next year and try to uh, try to um, imagine what we will be working on next year, 2022, uh, I think the green eligibility checker tool will be what was what you Daniela you've been just mentioning will be at a certain point in our process for, for our clients uh, we will simply have to embed that into our into our sales people talking to our uh, and, and borrowers uh, that they go together through this green eligibility checker tool to finally arrive with a report, yes, that product qualifies. And then we, as a as this intermediary financial institution, um, uh, will be providing some additional incentives to clients meeting that criteria. We will have to take that as our strategic direction for, for, for the company, I believe the whole industry will we, we have to uh, follow that um, uh, because, um, uh, you know, like simply be, be, before it, us meeting the green criteria was not the number one priority in the tranches we've been receiving. It was more about different factors I just mentioned such as support the local economy, development of the economy in general, try to do as much as you can with green. But these days, this is a uh, um, uh, take it or leave it, yes. maybe maybe yes. as far as that. Maybe yeah. it goes as far as that, you know, take it or leave it. You, you don't go uh, green and other criteria. You don't de deal with us for, for this 
funding and the, you know these funding facilities need to say that these are uh, really uh, uh, preferential we are transferring that benefits to our uh, end borrower so this is the the incentive uh, for or like the, the reward to our end borrower in the local economy that they go uh, a, a green path um uh, so you know if you ask if if we see that this is like important f f for a company such as picao picao leasing to to work with these green uh, funding sources yeah, the, we um, the answer is yes ultimately this is of the utmost importance and uh, we thought uh, the, 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 this is at the heart of our interest for our funding mix and also strategically at the heart of our interest not to mention like obviously as many companies are doing the whole PKI group has been adopting uh, ESG strategy and ESG po policy documents that also governs ourselves but uh, you know aside um, as all the policies all the general changes such as you know the, the general increased clim climate um, uh, um, issues awareness and uh, these are the factors that support green financing that supports uh, companies going green path funds from eab are uh, triggering the business efficiency uh, i think it was you you might martin mentioning about you know the the, the the business criteria of course our clients they're heavily re relying on whether there is a business case for such an activity simply eib is making that possible also for some green initiatives which are not always cheaper than this traditional like fossil fuel or whatever um uh, op options yeah, this is thanks to eib thanks to other similar institutions and programs that you're running and uh, that uh, the the business benefit uh, is created there we are happy to be part of this process part of this cycle as an intermediary institution happy to, to work uh, with you and you know uh, what i've just you know to, to put that in a nutshell what i've been just uh, uh, explaining i think most important is try to see how we may be working next year 2022 i think we we, we will be providing some specific programs to the markets uh, targeted specifically at, at green asset financing and uh, i think the green eligibility checker will be heavily used by simply you know and technically and practically our our sales people working together with um, uh, clients and you see even if some of the projects they won't qualify as uh, um, uh, uh, when we go with our client uh, our client or like po potential client uh, through the green eligibility checker there is a, a another benefit not that tangible perhaps about raising the awareness this is uh, a tool that helps to um, go with a dialogue with a discussion with a client you see maybe if you adapt your project a little bit into that way you uh, uh, you would get this project green that transfers into this particular and very tangible benefits uh, yeah. that we can offer you through eab funds yeah so Excellent. yeah frank i've seen yeah, well, thanks for that. thanks thanks heading thanks back over to you. That, thanks it's very positive uh, and inspiring and hopefully indeed um, i mean we'd, we'd like to think that the investment we've made in, in the tool is of of some use and it will be used you know literally on the ground uh, to help to help you and your clients uh, you know move uh, things frank, forward you know, yeah uh frank I, i've been presented this tool myself and i did my own steps into that tool so trust me i know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> great to hear martin turning to you again um you you mentioned uh well you mentioned a lot of things in your in your intervention um uh, feel free to pick up on any of those points a bit more but i but i think on the i mean you said what is green i mean uh, it's indeed a, a tough question to answer i suppose and the need for standardization and another point 
that you raise, which which I think we we fully agree with. Um, you know, only then can we obviously compare things across the piece, uh, apples and apples, etc., and, and and try to avoid um, what might some perceive to be greenwashing in some cases. What what's your views on on where the market needs to still go, if 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 anything? I mean, where would you like to see? these discussions in terms of regulatory developments, taxonomy developments. So, you know, do you have any views on this? Where are we going to be in five years from now? You've got to just unmute yourself. Sorry, Martin. Okay, now, yeah, of course, it's where we're going to be in five years from now. Uh, not so easy to answer. I think, where do we see ourselves? I think one comment is, a large part of our activity is outside the EU. So far, I think the um, eligibility checker is uh, is focused on the EU. Um, maybe repeating what I said about the role we see and the benefit we see out of the checker and then giving uh, a view on where we see the situation now and which way we hope it's going to develop. Um, as I mentioned in my in my first intervention, for me the reference point, so a good example is accounting. I think it makes a lot of sense to have something like IFRS for green, with as you do in your eligibility checker, with the possibility to modify, not to modify it, but to uh, do it on the basis country by country, because efficiency in one country is not the same as another country. So if you go up from here to there in this country, you can maybe go up from here to there in another country. Um, and um, until now, um, and I look at the EU taxonomy and this eligibility checker in, 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 uh, in, as one package, um, I think the EU taxonomy covered uh, sectors which are not the core sectors yet of SME. So my sense, my understanding is and how I see is that EU taxonomy more than needed, absolutely needed. Eligibility checker, also great initiative and also the fact that a heavyweight like EIB um, basically puts its yeah, economic weight, its position behind such an instrument, hopefully will contribute or even be the key reference point for becoming the IFRS in green. So where we stand now is um, we think with our own tools we need to and will continue for quite some time, given that um, there are tricky sectors like machinery, which is so differentiated that it's really difficult and challenging a lot of nitty gritty work to define base levels, to define country by country, industry by industry. Agriculture is not addressed yet. So we my 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 proposal would be, let's say, to say it needs to be um, continued along the lines as you started now. So it is a good start, but I think we should avoid the impression here we have it. It needs some fine tuning. That's it. It's only the start, and it's a start. And and, and the fact that, for example, reporting for SMEs is right, or SMEs don't need to report that um, the EU taxonomy so far covered the more easier segments, let's say, is a sign of that implementing the big global ambition, reducing the climate impact, bringing it down to operational instructions is a long, long way. Long means that we, we shouldn't wait for too long, but it's very resource intense and it's, it's nitty gritty. So my, where I see um, things right now is it's a start, it's a very good start, but it's only a start. And my hope for the next five years would be that we have an we, that we have an IFRS in five years' time for green. Yeah, let's see where we are. We might be uh, coming back together again in five years. Exactly. Okay, I, I will note in my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Uh, Marius, back to you. Uh, on, um, I got the impression that I. As you say, uh, you are you are already to some extent a green bank. Um, you already have been doing this for many years. Uh, why why would you need more uh, technical assistance? I guess from from uh, you want to expand on 
on what it is that we're going to be doing together under the bilateral advisory support, perhaps. Yes, thank you. Uh, I do hope that advisory services under CASF uh, will allow us to increase our capacity in several areas. But the most important, I think, uh, are two. The first is uh, um, advisory uh, within the area of product development and development of uh, the product development. And the second is sorry, development of specific tools and manuals. So these two tasks are very important for uh, for us. And under the product development component, we hope to get assistance in portfolio screening and uh, market assessment. And we also count. Uh, uh, to get external professional recommendations on the most promising climate action and environmental sustainability market segments, investment types, financial products, which should be developed and uh, uh, implemented. So this is the first group. And the second is tools and manuals. Uh, these tools and manuals uh, should help our front office staff to determine the eligibility of the projects and methodologies uh, to calculate impact and reporting indications, indicators aligned uh, uh, um, with the EU taxonomy and EIB uh, requirement. Last but not least, uh, uh, as I said, we um, uh, we're using uh, uh, funds from EIB in forms of uh, AMBIL agreements. Uh, uh, the total amount, I think, is more than 400 million euros so far. And uh, I'm sure that uh, such uh, technical support will help us to increase our capacity in distributing uh, uh, these funds to our, uh, um, uh, our clients. So generally, in a simple way, in a simple words, I would say that the overall goal of these coordinated activities is to properly address the needs of our clients. So the entities which are uh, who are looking for the entities uh, looking for financing of green uh, projects, we have to be updated. The, the world is changing very, as Bartosz said, is changing very rapidly. We were not talking about uh, green financing five years ago, to the extent uh, now everyone talking about, about this. And uh, we want to keep up the pace of the changing in the world. Thank you. Well, thank you, Marius. Indeed, valid points. Um, Daniela, coming back to you, I think. Um, and I think picking up on what Martin was saying, I mean, obviously this is a starting point. Um, it's a, it's an evolution. We need to continue improving, um, evolving on the on the tool and, and 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 the capacity building support we provide. What's your what's your vision, I suppose, in this respect? Uh, as I said, having been involved in this up to now, where would you like this thing to 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 go? I suppose next. Um, and you might also want to pick up on on Bartosz's point. Uh, I think he mentioned. Um, under the EIB lending facility, there is there is an element also linked to gender equality. Um, some might think that there's there's absolutely no, no link between gender equality and, and climate, but uh, I suppose we see that differently. But maybe you can comment on that. Yes, uh, thanks, uh, Frank. Um, let me just very briefly react uh, to our um, panelists before making um, some um, maybe concluding remarks on on where where how I see the the, the future. Um, first of all, I just really want to thank you again, and it's very interesting to hear. Um, that your three institutions, but uh, you also have very different uh, levels of of, um, of experience and also different motivations. You know, we, we have seen uh, uh, ProCredit coming from green being in the D DNA because uh, of a responsible banking approach. Also, Bosbank being involved in in green financing already for for many many years. Um, but then institutions like like uh, Picau leasing uh, who have yet started uh, uh, just started the, the journey and recognizing that no not enhancing green lending cap uh, capacity that will simply in the future restrict the uh, sources of, of, of funding um, maybe just two two concrete remarks uh, Frank you already uh, hinted to it so firstly Bartosz um, you mentioned also that uh, PICAO leasings and, and EIB's uh, joint uh, commitment on, on gender equality um, 
promoting female entrepreneurship. I mean, I know that this session we speak about this is green investments, but I also want to stress that bringing together you know, gender aspects and climate objective, this is something that has been widely discussed uh, also here at, at COP2026. Um, and, and this gender and, and climate finance uh, nexus, this is something that uh, that uh, the EAB and the EAB together with other stakeholders, we seek to understand better and, and to promote. Uh, there are multiple examples of, of women who are leaders uh, of, of climate action and, and green entrepreneurs and research clearly shows uh, sorry, I just have to stress this. Research clearly shows that companies with the better gender diversity on boards are more likely to reduce the intensity of energy consumption, greenhouse gas emissions and, and water use. So uh, I, I'm very pleased that together with Picau Leasing, uh, we, we can work uh, um, together on gender and climate uh, aspects and in parallel. And then I wanted to come back to, to Martin's uh, um, remark and uh, I just wanted to re-emphasize it because I really second the need for, for standardization and for a common uh, language when it comes to defining green. I mean, this is why the EU taxonomy and how it will evolve is so important. It's important to avoid greenwashing. We really need a common language when defining um, what is environmentally um, sustainable. And yes, I also agree that we are not uh, there yet. We are at the beginning of, of, of a journey. It's, it's a process. Hmm? Uh, the, the Green Checker and alongside uh, the, the advisory uh, assignments will continue to develop and, and to be enhanced. And, and we already uh, see it now when we started discussing um, the advisory uh, assignments. Uh, I think it, it must have been now uh, four, four years ago when, when we initiated uh, this package. It was about climate action. It was about climate action uh, following our EIB um, uh, uh, definitions. And it was um, supporting the banks in applying our definitions. But now the banks come to us and they say, well, how does this uh, pair with, with the EU taxonomy? And can you help us, please? Uh, the EU taxonomy is coming. So really, as, uh, um, as the taxonomy develops, we will also continue to develop our advisory assignments and the green checker. Um, we will continue to apply our EIB robust climate action and environmental sustainability definitions, which in turn are also in the process of being aligned to the EU taxonomy as we have committed in our climate bank uh, roadmap. And as we gain more experience in, in implementation and implementing uh, the evolving EU taxonomy regulation, uh, we will also continue to integrate this implementation experience in, into future, future features of, of the green uh, checker, including further facilitate uh, availability of data and to further ensure consistency with the evolving uh, uh, taxonomy. And there's one more thing that I want to uh, emphasize before I, I conclude this is that I would also uh, like to say uh, um, that uh, EAB support and, and such online tools, they go hand in hand and they are complementary with many other initiatives that are currently uh, in the process of being designed to support uh, banks in implementing, um, enhancing green financing and also implementing the, the upcoming EU taxonomy uh, regulation. Uh, we have seen here, uh, but we also hear it uh, um, from other uh, banks, many banks are very proactively thinking about and developing their own approaches to green uh, financing. Um, there's one initiative uh, that, that we in the EIB uh, are very supportive of um, that I just want to mention, uh, and it involves uh, many major European banks. This is the UNIPV and, and the European Banking Federation initiative on the application of the taxonomy on, on banks' uh, lending activities. And it's together with and complementary to such initiatives. Uh, so we will work together developing best practice standards with regards to green financing, um, we will work together on developing best practice standards that are consistent with the EU taxonomy. And, and I think we all have the same overarching goal to support the banking sector to be ready when the taxonomy implementation phase uh, kicks in. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Daniela. Um, I 
think you've you've wrapped it up well for us today. Uh, I see that we are pretty much at the end of our session. Um, it leaves me therefore just to say, you know, thank you very much. Thank you very much to our panelists today, uh, Bartosz, Martin, Irish, and of course Daniela. I think this was a very rich discussion, even though we had a relatively short period of time. I, I hope that the the viewers got a got a sense of of the reality on the ground, <laughs> um, but it also got inspired by you know the the direction that you three institutions are are are, are taking here. Yeah, I think we all agreed that this is the future. Um, there's no doubt about it. At the same time, you know, lots of good business opportunities probably coming from this as well. So it's it's not all downside for sure. Um, and at the same time, of course, we're doing our planet the best the best of good. So. Absolutely. Thank you very much again for your participation. Thank you, of course, to our Vice President uh, for, for opening the session. Thank you to Christine from the Commission, DG Ekvin, major funder of, of what we have been talking about today. So thanks very much for that. Uh, thanks to the team. That's also in the background here, some of the names you see on the screen. Um, we haven't needed to use them today. We haven't got any questions online, but that's that's fine. I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, I think we had a rich discussion and thank you very much. And we look forward, obviously, to having you guys join us again, um, hopefully not in five years time, but, but before that. So thank you very much again. Thank you to the viewers. And just to say, if you want to reach us, you can contact us on the European Investment Advisory Hub's website, um, but also through the screen checker, as I was mentioning before. If you have questions, send us emails through the through the checker tool. And uh, again, thank you very much.